Hi here, Philip there. Five portfolios that are doing something every web developer should be doing. Let's go. Portfolio number five, a full medieval torture kit. At first glance, it might look like something we've already seen. And it is. We have. But we've all seen the Pope too. But do we really know what he's hiding? See if you see what I see. Notice anything? I will tell you in a second, but see if you can guess it. Pause the video now for a chance to win a ceramic cat. So in this portfolio, UI changes depending on the scrolling speed. The faster you scroll, the more it stretches. And even though this is a sort of a side effect here, a characteristic of this chosen visual system, this interaction is highly unusual as it changes the UI based on a variable that is rarely taken into account, the speed of scrolling. It almost makes me think that we are not using the full interactive potential of the web. And it also makes me think calamari. <coughs> but that's... Mouse position, scrolling position, keyboard, click, drag. These are all standard parameters that we are using in web design all the time. But there are so many more variables that we could be using too to create unusual user experiences. Scrolling speed, mouse speed, browser window position, the time user has spent on the site, a previous page a user has visited, internet connection speed, is your device currently charging or not, the level your battery is charged to, the speed you are physically moving with, device orientation, the incredible thickness of the rural woman's eyebrows. Ah, I didn't know that's... When was the last time you've seen anyone using one of those? This is like owning a full medieval torture kit and then only using it to cut your children's hair. Portfolio number four. A portfolio that is not porridge. For those of you who are younger, this is a newspaper. A paper where you can find news. So why is it important? I think it's nice and rare to see web developers draw inspiration from the past, because there are so many cool things there you can get inspired by. Imagine a 60s style website, sort of like a Marvel's Mrs. Maisel vibe, 2000s styled websites, Apple's Golden Years, a Soviet Union style website, a Gothic style website, a Spanish Inquisition styled website. Where are those? I feel like modern web design is somewhat lacking diversity, and modern web designers are sort of like kindergarten cooks. For a long time it used to be impressive how the porridge, if you turn the plate upside down, would not fall to the ground. But not anymore, because everyone is doing it now. Portfolio number three. The wind blows, the fire burns, the multi passport rocks, the rocks are in me. <clears throat> Your inspiration doesn't have to be drawn from design at all. It doesn't even have to be drawn from man-made objects. What if your site looks like sand, or smoke, or fire, or clouds, or snow? What if the whole site is entirely underwater, or a site that looks like night, or mirrors, or a fir tree, or grandmother's bar? Portfolio number two. The same thing I've already said in number four. Drawing inspiration from the past, an 80s game interface to be more specific, but also kind of building on it to create a new visual style.
And finally, portfolio number one, Philip. Why didn't I think of it? I think it's important to be impressive and not serious about it. Making people laugh is a much better way to win their trust and gain their liking than trying to impress them. Sweeney Todd So, when doing your next project, remember that you can always find inspiration in the past and everywhere around you. Consider using more interactive tools available to you and don't take it too seriously. Thank you all very much for watching, like if you liked it, subscribe for more future web inspiration, don't forget to look up and see you soon.